come from the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 8 to 15 and we read because you have plundered many nations the peoples who are left with plunder will plunder you for you have shed human blood you have destroyed lads and cities and everyone in them woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin you have flooded the ruins of many peoples, shaming your own house for and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed, and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drinks to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin which they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. At the end of our reading, may God bless his word. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. My name is Peter Kamaukeo. I love Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We have taken our readings from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 13, verse 8 to 15. And also we, can, we will see Psalms 51 from verse 1 to 12. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you this morning for this opportunity that you have given us to hear your word. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit shall walk with us in this journey of faith, even as we listen unto your voice. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Our dear listeners and viewers, today marks the end of study in the book of Habakkuk. In the previous studies, we went through 11 teachings and sub-themes that were del derived from the book of Habakkuk. Our main theme was the conclusion of Habakkuk on what he went through while he wrestled with God, in which he continued to rejoice in God despite the circumstances. Habakkuk experienced injustice, violence, despair, and trouble, trouble and de depression. Today, marks therefore the end of season in this book of Habakkuk. We thank you that you have been following us even during the Bible studies that we have held so that we can continue to understand the book of Habakkuk. Our last theme in the study of prophet Habakkuk is dealing with the consequence of sins. Uh, and let me start by saying that in the text of Habakkuk, we find God declares the consequence nation of Judah would divide from their own committed sins. The book of Judah, the, the people of Judah looked rich, they were very proud and sinful and prospered for a time. In the text, God promised that you punish them and eventually God will triumph. He is warning them for the consequence of their sins. And he says, as we have read, because you have plundered many nations, the people who are left will plunder you. Because you had built houses by unjust gain, the stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the wood, woodwork will echo it. Because they had built the city with bloodshed and established the town by injustice, the consequence will be 
the yareba will only be fuel for the fire. He continued to further tell them what sorrow awaits them who make neighbors drunk, forcing, forcing your cup on them so that you can gaze on their naked bodies. He tells them the consequence shall be shame you will turn on you instead of glory. My dear viewers and listeners, the consequence of sin is evident that it must come, it must pass and, and be experienced. We cannot escape consequence of sin. And therefore, this morning, it is important to know how to, do, to deal with the consequence of our own actions. One of the hardest lesson, lessons in life to learn is that every action has consequence. Any, any choice we make has consequence. And I remind you, the last time somebody was saying that choices has consequences. And I want to give a story of a pastor. A story is told by a pastor of one of his teenage members who was crying. The pastor saw her crying. And the pastor took the young girl into his office. There, she informed him that she was pregnant. And after counseling with her for a little while, he was able to lead her to faith in Jesus Christ. The following week, she returned to, ch to church. It was obvious to the pastor that something wasn't right. When he asked her what was wrong, she replied, Pastor, I thought you said I got saved. Pastor replied, Yes, my dear one, as far as I know, you did get saved. Then the girl responded, Then why am I pregnant? Dear listeners, as with the girl in the story above, we often equate God's forgiveness with him removing the consequence of our sinful actions. It doesn't work that way. The Bible clearly teaches that whatever we sow is what we reap. The reason being, our actions have consequence. Sadly, neither the home nor society at large teaches much about consequence of sin today. We are very silent to tell our young people the consequence of their sin. We are very silent to tell our friends the consequence of their actions. I want you to look at David in Psalms 51. When he sinned with Bathsheba, wife of Uriah. Yes. God loved David so much, but this did not stop David from facing the consequence of his action. As we read that story, though David prayed and he fasted, he faced the consequence. 
but eventually we see that he reconciled with God. He asked God for restoration. He asked God to restore the, to restore the joy of salvation. And we know that when David sinned, he ran to God for forgiveness. And therefore this morning, what do we do? Dealing with the consequence of sins. I want to suggest few things that we should do as we deal with the consequence of sin. Number one, the first thing is to seek forgiveness from God. Forgiveness from God extinguish the fire of sin. It deprives sin of the fuel and oxygen necessary to continue burning. After that, after that, after we have looked for forgiveness, after that, we come to more difficult part of dealing with the consequence of the consequence. We find that our sins are forgiven by God, but we have broken lives, we have broken families, we have the trust that is destroyed. Yes, the consequence of our sins, we meet them. This morning, my dear viewers, let us avoid sin. Let us avoid sin as much as we can, for there is consequence of sin. Number two, for us to deal with the consequence of sin, we must assume responsibility. We must assume responsibility. David said, I know my sins, and my sins are always before me. He did not look for someone else to blame. Instead, he owned up his mistakes. He had met adverse circumstances. He was facing were his own doing. Brothers and sisters, when we are dealing with the consequence of sin, assume responsibility. Assume responsibility of your own action. When you do that, you'll be able to go before God, give yourself to God, and ask for forgiveness. The other thing that we may do dealing with the consequence of sin is confess and repent of sin. To confess is to agree with God regarding your disobedience. Go to God like David. Tell God you have sinned. Don't go to God. Some people you go and just say that it was a mistake or they had an accident. No. Go to God. Tell him I have sinned before you and before people. Ask for forgiveness. Confess that sin before him. Then after you have confessed, the other thing that you do, the other step that you go to, is then repent. This one requires that you make decision to turn away from sin. This may need, or this may mean adding some of these things we treasure most may be a job or may be a relationship. For us young people, for us people who are working, when we are repenting, you may mean that you are ending that thing that you have treasured for so long. But it is important. Sometimes you may be required to change your lifestyle. Bwana asifiwe sana. So, 
Sometimes when we are in this process of repenting, you may need to apologize to someone you longed or, or return something you have stolen, you have taken. It is disturbing you. Every time you see it, you need to apologize. To repent is to make every arrangement, you make every arrangement necessary to avoid repeating the same mistake. Praise the Lord. When we do that, we are dealing with the consequence of sins. Number three, on how to de deal with the consequence of sin, do not complain. My friend, do not complain. If you suffer because of your own action, you have no right to complain. Don't spend your energy trying to get people, people's sympathy. Focus on getting right with God. Focus on getting right with God every time. Do not complain. When you have done that, the other step that you go, you go for is you ask God to help you discover the weakness through which sin comes, in, it comes to your life. When you do that, when you know you are weak, you are weak in this area, you are weak here and there, you ask God to help you to discover so that you can free, just like the Bible tells us, free the devil, and you free from us all your weakness, free yourself from them, and then the devil, you have no chance in your life. Finally, brethren, when we have done that, recognize God wants to use a diversity in your life. Regardless what it is, a diversity is always a powerful tool in the Lord's heart. And when you cooperate with God, God knows how we want to use it in your life and for your good. Tell him, I know I'm suffering because of my own doing, but I trust you will use this time of adversity to deepen my faith and strengthen my commitment to you. When we have done that, my dear brethren, we will be able to deal. We will be able to deal with the consequence of sin. And sin will not be a problem in our life because we will move with it depending on the power of God, depending on the, 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 what God is going to do with us and in us so that we continue in this life. May God help us in this time that we have been looking at the book of Habakkuk, that we have been looking at many things that happened in the nation of Judah, that God may help us to realize that there is sin that we do and any actions, any action that we do will face the consequence. Let us pray. God, our Lord, nothing is beyond your forgiveness. Forgive us our sins and help us do, de deal with all the consequences it brings in our life. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen.